As Dominique has said, um, if you're feeling overwhelmed or upset by anything we talk about today, please don't hesitate to reach out to one of us that you feel comfortable with. And you know, we're more than happy. And often after these sessions, I get lots of emails and questions, and that's completely fine. So please feel free to do that. So increasingly we're aware that people who are born with complex congenital heart disease are much more likely to be inactive than the general population. And that's not just because they've been sick. The foundations for an active life and those habits are formed very early in life. And often for many people with a congenital heart problem, childhood is punctuated by hospital admissions, major operations, it's a time when people might have just been too sick to exercise. A lot of people don't have a, a positive feeling about their body, and a lot of my young patients I know are very self-conscious about the scar on their chest. They really don't have a lot of confidence exercising. Often they've been told to sit out, or they've not been able to keep up in team sports, and they've just learnt to think that they're not good at sport and it's not an enjoyable activity. Some of my patients have never even owned a pair of trainers to do exercise well into adulthood. And something I hear all the time from my adult patients is that they were wrapped in cotton wool, that their parents were terrified of them participating, that they might get hurt or they might damage their heart. And that was really fed by the medical profession at the time because traditionally we thought that it might be harmful to exercise. But we now know, because of research that's really exploded in the past 10 years or so, that regular exercise is very important for a whole range of congenital heart defects. It improves exercise capacity, it improves muscle strength and function, it actually can improve heart function, and we've got some good research to suggest that, especially in Fontan. It makes you feel better with regard to your mental health, it improves self-esteem, reduces symptoms of breathlessness, and it even has been associated with reducing the risk of hospital admissions. So it might be even more important than the heart muscle function itself. And there's one extra really important reason why exercise is so important in the setting of a Fontan circulation. We understand now that if you have a Fontan circulation, your body composition is much more likely to have high fat tissue and low muscle mass than somebody without a Fontan circulation. And we're just starting to understand what the reasons for that might be. And I've got a PhD student, Derek, who's helped create these slides for you today. So probably there's a reduced muscle mass in your arms and legs because of low blood flow and potentially reduced oxygen saturations as well. And there's a whole range of other reasons that we're looking into at the moment. And um, we've studied this in detail in a population of adults. So on this graph here, oh, why is the pointer? Oh, there we go. So on this vertical axis, we've measured with a special scan called a DEXA, the body composition. And that tells us what the percentage of fat is in the body and what the, per the percentage of muscle mass. So it's, it's much more accurate than just plonking somebody on the scales. So here we have fat percentage, and along the bottom it's gone all wonky there, but this is a score of muscle mass. And a score of less than minus one is an abnormal muscle mass. And you can see that around half of our Fontan people are carrying too much fat tissue, and the vast majority have a score of muscle mass less than minus one. They've got unusually low muscle mass. Now, if you just put yourself on the scale, it, the weight is reasonable. The problem is that fat weighs heaps less than muscle. And so on the scales, you might seem to be within a normal weight range. But in reality, most people will have increased fat tissue, low mass, low muscle mass. So the people in this pink box uh, have healthy muscle and low fat. And the good thing is that we can do something about it. We can bring people into the pink box by exercising. So we've studied this and we've trained a group of Fontan people really intensively with weight training. 
So we taught them how to do proper weights in a gym, and they put on around two kilos of muscle and lost fat. So there is something we can do about, and there's something you can do about changing that body composition. And there's really important reasons why we want you to work on that body composition. And it's not just so that you look good in a pair of tight jeans or a bikini. Your body really relies on having healthy, chunky muscles to help move blood around your body. So as you heard Andrew beautifully describe this morning, the Fontan circulation just works with a single heart pump. In a boring old standard two-pump situation, there's also a heart pump sitting over here to push blood into the lungs. Now, the Fontan circulation does not have a pump over here to push blood through the lungs. It works in a completely unique way. When you breathe in, it sucks blood into the lungs like you're sucking, blood, sucking air. You don't suck blood into a piano accordion, but sucking air into a piano accordion. Then when you breathe out, you're squeezing that blood back into the circulation to be pushed around the heart, into the heart. And when you exercise, more blood is pushed back up to the heart because your leg muscles are acting as two little pumps, pushing blood back up to the lungs. So these are pictures that you're, you might recognise from when you have an echo. And so these are pictures that we take. This is one of our registrars who I accost, accosted in the hallway in a professional way and um, <laughs> did an ultrasound. And um, so... You can see here with each heartbeat, you get a little triangle. There's a little whoosh of blood into the lungs with each heartbeat. And this is one of our Fontan patients. And you can see that the flow profile looks completely different. There's no whoosh of blood with each heartbeat. There's just this very slow flow going in each time the person takes a breath. But the really amazing thing about Fontan is that as soon as I, this person was actually sitting on an exercise bike while I took these pictures, every time they did a pedal on the exercise bike, which you can see with the red and green arrows, there's a whoosh of blood coming back up into the heart. So every time you're exercising, you're helping pump blood around the body. And that pumping's even better when you've got big, healthy, chunky muscles. So what is the best time to start exercising? Well, we believe very strongly that it should be as early as possible. And it's much easier to form habits when you start things early. And there's a good evidence now coming out of Japan and some of the data that we've um, worked on here in Australia that regular participation in sporting activities and vigorous exercise is associated with much better exercise capacity and outcomes, but it is never too late. And there was a lovely paper just published out of Japan that showed even if you go backwards in your exercise capacity, if you start building your fitness, that actually reduces the risk of problems later on. So don't be discouraged if you, if you do go backwards. It's still worthwhile working on exercising just to build, build your fitness back up. So I don't have a lot of time to talk about the nitty gritty of exercise training. And Julian was going to be speaking before me, but he's coming up next to talk to you about the role for the exercise test. And it's important that you do go and talk to your cardiologist before you start, and they can give you some guidelines about how much you can push yourself during exercise. But for the majority of people, you, it, it is safe for you to do fairly vigorous amounts of exercise, not just wandering along the street eating a pastry. And also remember that the exercise you do throughout the day, climbing the stairs or hopping off a bus stop early, is also a really important way to build your fitness. And in Australia, if you go to your GP and get a chronic care plan, you're entitled to get five Medicare rebated sessions with an exercise physiologist. And a lot of my patients find that really helpful. I work with, with that exercise physi physiologist and we really make them a tailored exercise plan to get them started, which is great if you've never exercised and have no idea what, what you're, you're doing, you're not familiar with things. So start with modest goals. It's, and, and it's really important to try and do things that you enjoy. If you're hating what you're doing, you're not gonna maintain it in the, in the long term. Ideally, it's great if you can exercise most days of the week for at least 30 minutes, but even 10 minutes a day is gonna be helping your circulation. And, for kids, 
as Julian said to me yesterday, if the family is not active, your child's not going to be active. It's really important to do things as a family. Um, and, and often you'll hear, talking, talking to my patients who are the ones who are really sporty and active, they all say, oh, my parents just used to push me along as a kid and I remember Dr. So-and-so saying I shouldn't exercise and my parents ignored them. And, and it really has made an enormous difference flowing on into adulthood. Um, so I suggest to my patients that they try and do a mix of cardio exercises, which is things where you're getting your heart rate up, like might be um, team sports, dancing, swimming, walking but not sauntering, like really getting, getting your speed up, even using some little hand weights, with some resistance exercise, about 50-50. And resistance exercise might be going to the gym, but there's also lots of things you can do at home. Or one thing that I, we've started using more and more are uh, resistance bands. So they're little stretchy bands you can buy. They're really cheap and it just helps you build, do some home resistance. And there's heaps of YouTube videos and things that you can Google to give you some ideas about weight, about weight training. But it is important when you are weight training to have good technique. And, Ideally, somebody should show you how to do that, but try not to breath hold when you're doing a strain. So breathe out, breathe in and breathe out whilst you're straining. Don't, because you can get a bit lightheaded. You do rely on breathing to help your blood flow through your body. So make sure you're doing it properly. So in conclusion, regular exercise is really important for people with a Fontan circulation, probably even more so than people with a boring old two-pump heart. It's important that you keep as active as you can and everybody has different potential. And it's important to be realistic about what, what, um, what you're going to achieve. Um, and, but it's one way, a lot of things um, when you've got a chronic health condition are completely out of your control. And this is something that you can do for your, yourself to help you be at your absolute very best.